Riley Cy here. After my previous video on Gregor Mendel, there are some obvious questions. Why did the short type disappear in the F1 generation? Secondly, when they came back in the F2, why did they only come back 25% of the time? To answer these, we'll need to have some way to represent what's going on. Recall that Mendel said that there are two factors for plant height. Today we call these factors alleles. Geneticists usually represent alleles with letters. First they choose a letter for the dominant variation. In this case, that's a tall plant, so we'll use the letter T. Now, the dominant variation, a tall plant, will use a capital T. The recessive variation, a small plant, will use the lowercase t. Now, each factor or allele comes from the mother. The other allele comes from the father. And each allele can be either dominant, capital, or recessive, lowercase. This means that the possible combinations are big T, big T, little t, little t, big t, little t, little t, big t. And this is what each combination leads to. A big t, big t leads to a tall plant, dominant. Little t, little t, short plant, recessive. Big t, little t, tall plant, dominant. Little t, big t, tall plant, dominant. And yes, we really do say big t and little t. You see that the short is only there 25% of the time? This must be like the F2 generation. But what happened in F1? First, let's get some of that annoying terminology out of the way. These pairs of letters are called the genotype. And what they lead to in the organism is the phenotype. So, for plantite, there are four possible genotypes. Big T, big T, little t, little t, big T, little t, and little t, big t. The three genotypes with a big t lead to tall plants. What the organism actually shows is the phenotype. Pheno, by the way, is from Greek, meaning to show. So the three genotypes that have a dominant allele, big t, lead to the tall plant phenotype. And the one genotype that is only two recessive alleles, little t, little t, leads to the small plant phenotype. Well, okay, that explains F2, but what about F1? Well, every genotype in F1 was the same, either big T, little t, or little t, big t. Now hold it. If they're the same, how come there are two genotypes instead of only one? Well, you caught me. These two genotypes are really the same. It doesn't matter which letter comes first. The result is always the same. So scientists just always write it with the dominant allele first. Now, I'm going to show you what was going on and how these probabilities come about. I'm going to use a tool created by Reginald Punnett in the early 1900s. But first, some more terminology. The genotypes big T, big T, and big T, little t are similar because the alleles are the same. These genotypes are called homozygous because homo means same. For big T, little t, and little t, big t, which are really the same since the order doesn't matter, so just big T, little t, that's heterozygous because hetero means other. Okay, homo means same, hetero means different, but what about zygous? That refers to zygosity, 
which refers to a zygote, a fertilized egg. Remember, the first thing Mendel did was make purebred tall and purebred short plants. The genotypes for these are big T, big T, and little t, little t. Both are homozygous because the two alleles are the same for each. These are the parent organisms in the P generation. So, you start with a grid like this, and it would be nice if I could draw straight lines. Now, add the genotype for one parent on top and the genotype for the other parent on the side. It doesn't matter which one you use for which. Now, copy the letters in the boxes on the top row down into the two boxes below each. And copy the letters in the boxes on the left into the two boxes to the right of each. The four boxes that you copied into represent the possible genotypes for the offspring. You can see that there are four possibilities, and in this case, all four are the same. Big T, little t. The genotype, big T, little t, leads to a phenotype of a tall plant. This Punnett square shows that no matter what, if you start with a purebred tall, big T, big T, and a purebred short, little t, little t, you will always get a heterozygous big T, little t, which will give you a tall plant. This is why all the plants in the F1 generation were tall. Well, how about the F2 generation? Well, in this case, Mendel had the plants self-fertilize, so he put the pollen of plant 17 into the flower of plant 17. All of these plants are heterozygous, big T, little t. Let's do the Punnett square. Start with a blank square. Put the genotype of one parent on the top, and the genotype of the other parent on the left. Since the plant is self-fertilizing, we use the same genotypes in both places. Copy the letters on top down, and copy the letters on the right across, and we're left with the following Punnett square. Looking closely, we see that one square is homozygous dominant, big T, big T. Two squares are heterozygous, big T, little t. One square is homozygous recessive, little t, little t. The genotypes, big T, big T, and big T, little t, will lead to the phenotype of a tall plant every time. The genotype little t, little t, will lead to the phenotype of a small plant. But the fully recessive genotype is in only one out of the four boxes, so it should appear about 25% of the time, which is what Mendel observed. The Punnett square lets us predict the probabilities of the phenotypes that result from a cross. That is to say, the Punnett square tells us how often each phenotype should appear. For the F1 generation, the big T, big T parent forces all offspring to have a dominant big T allele, and all the plants are tall. But all the plants also have a recessive little t allele. When the F1 generation self-fertilizes, 75% of the offspring will have at least one dominant big T allele and be tall, while the rest of the offspring, 25%, will have two recessive 
little t alleles, and be a short plant. Well, that's it for Mendel. Punnett squares make it easy to predict how often different phenotypes will appear if we know the genotypes of the parents. Thanks for watching. Riley Syatt.